Now, the, uh, the, the first question, and I hear you're the man that might be able to answer this one, is um, who does the, the tech actually belong to? Is it Death Analysis? Is it Team Bondi? Are they the same thing? That's actually been asked quite a few times. It belongs to Death Analysis. It was developed in... Um, we started working on this in 2004 from scratch. There was no such system existing at the time. And there's no, like, everything was developed from scratch. The tools, the actual capture pipeline, the infrastructure, the capture rig, all from scratch. We just bought off-the-shelf products and put them together, like the hardware. Wow, it's kind of guerrilla. Yes. Well, it, there, there was nobody else doing this at the time, so we had no choice and Brendan really wanted to build such a system. What was the, the learning process behind doing that, since no one else was doing something similar in the space? Yes, um, there were people doing it in the research space and basically we had to take their ideas and make it into a commercially viable system. And so it was very intense. The first time I read the design paper and thought, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Then I realized I actually have to do it after I started working on the job. That was quite a challenge. So everything was just like, okay, go somehow figure it out, make it work. So tell us a little bit about uh, the, the process and the amount of data that you're pushing across uh, for, for such a huge camera rig. Yes, um, we've got the cameras at 2 megapixels and 30 frames per second and the combined data rate with um, currently it's about like one gigabytes per second. So streaming that onto hard disk is quite a challenge back then. When I talked to system engineers, they were just looking at me funny and saying, why would you want to do that? And so that was quite funny back then in 2004 and five ish And then after we actually stream it to the hard disk for video recording, we still have to move it to the main storage to do processing. And that's another challenge there as well. Because you have to do it cheaply and yet still fast enough. So what was the solution to such huge storage needs? Um, we basically just tuned every single thing that we could to make it fit the data type that we have because it's a large video file. So we're just making sure that the chunks that we write to the hard disk is big enough, like keep on flushing big chunks as regularly as, as we can. And the same with video processing um, on the main storage. So just purposely tuned. Now, I, I think I remember hearing Brendan say that you ended up with about 21 hours of usable in-game uh, yes. cutscene footage. I imagine there's plenty else in, in storage uh, yeah. somewhere that didn't make the, the final cut for the game. What, what sort of size are we talking about? Um, we actually capture more like 75 hours of editor footage and only 21 made into the game. And I think we are, we, well actually we are archived the data to LTO4 tapes, server tapes, and I think we ship back about 400 tapes. It's quite heavy, those tapes, so. Can you give us a figure? Um, Weight-wise? No, 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 size, you know, total data capacity size. Um, they're about 800 gig tapes, so it's probably like 35 terabytes, I think. Wow. Uh, now, Tim Bono obviously remains an independent studio, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's received some s support on LA Noir. Uh, mm -hmm. What we see future Rockstar games, given the partnership, potentially using some of the, the technology in the game? Well, that's still for them to decide. Basically, we, DA, our depth analysis is open to work with any client, so if people want to work with us, that's great. Um, we're happy to basically work with anyone at this stage. So you're interested in being a middleware company, um, uh, working across both film and games? Um, yes, that's correct. Uh, now, tell us about the, the difficulties of the, the geographic location. Uh, partway through the, the project, the, the Capture Studio itself moved to Los Angeles, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, here was... you, uh, you spent a bit of time with long days. Yes, I did. Um, so Brendan said that we're going to move it to LA and in the time frame about six months back then. And that was quite a challenge because we have to actually get the hardware from this location to LA through customs, have insurance and then make sure they get there in, in one piece. Everything tuned before then and reassembled them together. And I think I ended up, the plan was to have the studio configured with equipment in about a month and ended up having about 10 days over Christmas and New Year's. So that was basically just like push it through and make sure, make sure it works. And once it was all set up in terms of getting content back to the, the studio in Australia to, to have them working on it, tell us about the logistics involved in that. Um, it's actually not too bad because we, we've got this production pipeline that plans all the captures beforehand so this way we can track every single take that we need to do and then have them tracked through capture and then shipping, like archiving, shipping and then arriving in Sydney re restored. 
So by having that set up, we made sure that nothing was lost in the process. And every single tape actually worked as well, because we always have two copies. Now if one a, fails, the other one always works. Sorry, it's, a, it's an interesting process in terms of doing facial capture, but still mm -hmm. you know, traditionally animated bodies. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think there's still room for the, the mixed approach that has been done on Eleanor? Or, uh, you know, some motion scan alongside um, traditional animation. Is it a fundamental industry shift towards a new way of doing things, do you think? Um, that's for our peers to decide, really. We, we've done it this way and we've got interesting results that people seem to like. And I think there's definitely better ways that we could, well, from the, the capture we've done for Alain Noir, we've known there are better ways that we can get a performance of the actors. It's just a matter of um, a trade-off between the cost and the time needed versus the quality. It's always like that. It's there's no way to get around it. And we've actually done a test with another client, a test, a short test, and we got really good results with MoCat done separately as well, so. Was it ruled out early on that it wouldn't be full body and facial capture? Um, well, we started wanting to do full body, but the, at the time the hardware wasn't ready. So we, had, we decided to do a prototype on facial capture first. And by then we kind of locked ourselves into the process of doing head capture for the game and then we kind of just kept on polishing it since 2007 that was. Is that something you see evolving into to full body uh, acted stage capture? Yes, we're actually looking at it right now, we're doing research 